everybody. This is Chef Bernard Pilon. I'm the executive chef at Maryville University. I work for Fresh Ideas Food. I've been here for about a year and a half, and today I'm going to teach you how to make crepes. And I know we're all scared of making crepes, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to make it as easy as can be, and you're going to just going to love this recipe. So we start off with the crepe recipe. We have two eggs. It's very simple. Two eggs. We're going to put a little bit of a tablespoon of melted butter. You can melt the butter in the microwave if you want or on the stove top, however you feel comfortable. Okay, we're going to mix that together just lightly. We're going to add a pinch of salt. A pinch is always what you can pick up between your forefinger and your thumb. That's always what a pinch is, just in case you were wondering all these years. We're going to put in a half a cup of um, water tap water, cold water, and we're going to put in a half a cup of milk. If you want to use whole milk, if you want to use half and half, um, two percent, even half and half will work depending on how rich you want your crepes to be. Once we have this mixed, we're going to add a cup of our flour, and we're going to whisk as we're adding a little bit at a time. We try to not whisk as too much because otherwise we're going to form the gluten. The gluten is the protein that if we whisk it way too much your crepes can and will be a little tougher than you want them to be. So we just want to whisk to make sure everything is all incorporated. No lumps in there. Notice that you know I probably whisked down for about 20 seconds and we're already good to go. With the crepe batter, once you have the crepe batter uh, made it's nice to let those glutens relax if you're in for about a half an hour There are a lot of different theories on how long you want to let that crepe batter uh, Relax where I find that 30 minutes you never have a problem with it uh, And we're gonna make a little lemon berry sauce here uh, And we're gonna move it with blueberries and raspberries. You can use whatever berries you want to don't forget um, Once again, uh, the only limit to this cooking is your imagination. So I'm doing berries. If you want to do anything else that you want to do, some people put, of course, whipping cream on it. Uh, some people, Nutella is always a good thing on crepes. Just butter and sugar. This Canadian boy likes maple syrup and like a little bacon on top of it. Get that salt, salty sweet thing going. But there's no limit to what you can do. Those mushrooms that you saute can also be done in for something a little savory, mushrooms and Swiss cheese. So there's no limit. But this is a nice quick sauce. That we that we can build here, and it's simply done by actually putting your berries in a pot, in a small pot, with your sugar, and really just letting it cook for a couple of minutes. It's just so that the sugar melts. And once the sugar melts and all the juices will come out of the berries, we're gonna we're gonna finish it off with a little slurry of the cornstarch and the water. So you're adding. So I had a little cornstarch here. And I added just enough water to make a nice slurry out of it. I like to add a little zest of lemon. This is a microplaner. I think we've all seen these in this day and age. Uh, they are different grades of it. This one cuts it really nice and small. So for us to be eating it, you know, you're not going to get a big zest caught in your mouth or anything like that. And it works rather well. So you can put as much or as little lemon that you would want into here. And just for a little, that ever extra thing. I, I have a, a palate that really enjoys the tart flavor of things, so I like it when there's a little lemon in these things. That's just me. So you see we're cooking it down, and it's gonna take three or four minutes for us to get to the consistency we want. Once we've got enough liquid going on, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tighten it up with a little slurry. Do I have to put the slurry um, of cornstarch in it? No, but it's gonna be liquidy, it's gonna be, more like water running on your uh, crepe. And I don't think that that's really something that you want. I think it makes a little bit more sense to, um, here we go, as you see those, all that liquid starting to come fresh in here. You know, I've got it over a high heat and they lower that heat a little bit so we don't burn the sugar as well. Look at, see how quickly that comes together? It's probably been on there for what, 45 seconds or so? And see how much liquid is coming out of it? This is something thing I will allow you to stir so that you see that it doesn't burn. Once we bring that to a boil, and don't forget, cornstarch will only work, will only activate 
once it ha once uh, it is incorporated into a liquid that has boiled, or that's brought, being brought back to a boil. So we've got this just about boiled. We're just about at that point. We're boiling, and we're going to add the slurry to it. And once that slurry is taking effect, and once it's brought back to a boil, and you can judge if you want something thicker or thinner as well. Uh, you could just make that call as you're going along. You know, it's it's. Uh, in French we say, and I'm from Montreal, les goûts ne sont pas à discuter, which basically means to each his own or her own. I'm going to pour in the rest of this cornstarch, and we're going to bring that to a quick boil. And once it has boiled, it's going to start to thicken. So, as you see, I poured all of the slurry that I calls for in the recipe. It began to boil, and all of a sudden, as it's boiling, the sauce has begun to thicken and we've got this really nice berry sauce that we can utilize for our crepes coming up right now. So we got a crepe pan. So I like to have these crepe pans on hand. It's got a little bit less of a lip. Can you do this in an ordinary pan? Absolutely. Um, cast iron is probably best. I don't, you know, and this is like stainless. It's a little light, lighter, but um, it's something that's a non-stick. Yes. Can you do it? Yes. Uh, do I like cooking in, in um, non-stick? No, not at all. I never have and I never will uh, because of the uh, plastic that's obviously and non-stick. And also, the main thing about non-stick is you can't get it up to that high temperature that you need to really sear things off properly. So you can use a little veg oil on this, a um, little Pam spray, whatever it may be. And they always say that that first crepe never comes out right. I'm going to say that's totally wrong. Okay, I'm going to say that people don't know their heat well enough. So you've got to get used to your heat, and that once you get that heat down, the first one, like the last one, will come out perfectly. Although there's an argument to be said for making the first one miss on purpose so that now you could just have Scooby snacks and eat it like that as is. So if that's your, they're your druthers, that's good. So it's, if you've noticed this crepe batter, it's a little thin, and that's the way it's supposed to be. We're gonna pour it right in the middle. If you think your pan's not hot enough, again, go back to the sizzle in the middle, once it starts to sizzle, we're gonna pour right down the middle here. I've got a two ounce ladle here. It should cover the whole pan. It should make a nice thin crepe. And if it doesn't cover the whole pan, so there's a couple of things you can do. You can take your pan, you can have a smaller pancake. You can also drizzle along the side here and just fill it up however you wanna do it and just continue to drizzle. Look as everything adheres to the bottom. And we're just gonna cook it for a couple of minutes on one side and a couple of minutes on the other side. And then you'll have your crepe and it's gonna be, I think it's just perfect. You'll see, you try these at home. I've cooked many, I've taught many a crepe cooking class and people were always like, oh my gosh, I was so worried about this. I was so, I didn't know I was gonna be able to handle this. And everybody at the end of the class was always like, oh, you just like, just surprised the heck out of me and I, I feel really comfortable with it all these and so the recipes I know are solid and they work you can take a little peek underneath with an offset spat to see where it's at in terms of browning and I'll be honest with you and I, I I'm not gonna do this but I usually pick it up with my hands I shouldn't even say that and I just flip it over with my fingers I'm not gonna say that on camera but and or do it for you on camera or say it on camera but I, that's what I usually do do I have to flip it could you flip it yeah why would you want to flip it if you can just do that. See how perfect that is? That's what you want to crepe. That's how nice and thin it's going to be. It's going to take about 30 seconds on this side. So then I'm going to transfer it to a plate once it's done. And I'm going to continue making crepes. You can keep them warm by keep keeping them in a low oven at about 200 degrees. Uh, we're going to make one more. Show you again how it's done. So maybe a three ounce ladle is better on this one. So one and a half here. Let's go with that. Yeah, three ounce ladle, that's what you all need to get. Look how perfect that's gonna be. So again, first crepe, look, it came up perfectly. All right, shocking, I know. And we're gonna let that cook again for about 30 seconds or so, and then we're gonna see how. So you can do a lot of things with crepes while this is cooking. So we can stuff it with anything you would want stuff, let's say a little whipped cream or something like that, and fold it over, and you can have it like that. Um, you could also just stuff it if you're doing a mushroom and Swiss cheese, stuff it and roll it. So however you want to treat it. 
is going to be, you know, again, your imagination. I know I've seen a duck confit, a duck cooked in its own fat like that with a little, a little sachet here. You could do that as well. So there are many different applications to your crepes. After you've made about 20,000 of these, you'll be an expert, I promise you. Here we go once again. And if you're having trouble lifting it, again, sorry, I said I wasn't going to do that, so I'm not. You didn't see that? I'll give you that flashy thingy like Men in Black, boom. Again, if you're in an alternate universe, you might be happier with that right now. Then we're going to come in, I'm going to plate it right here. Do I have my one crepe? I have my other crepe. Turn off my fire. So for this kind of application, I like to have something that I'm going to roll up. Roll the second one right here. Here we have two beautiful crepes side by side. We have our berry sauce that we made. Just finished up with a little berry sauce. All right, is that spectacular? Do you need anything else in life? Maybe a little bit of uh, rosé or something like that. For me, it'd probably be Irish whiskey. I, you know, if anybody wants to get me anything ever, Irish whiskey. All right, so there you have it. There you have your beautiful crepe lemon berry sauce. Thank you for joining us.